Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Senate Committee on Commerce and Labor for the 81st Legislative Session. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Hardy? Here. Senator Lang? Here. Senator Neal? Here. Senator Pickard? Here. Senator Scheibel? Here. Senator Settlemeyer? Here. Chair Spearman? Here. So thank you, everyone who is joining us virtually and those of you who may be listening or watching over the Internet. Just a few housekeeping rules. If you have something that's going to go zoom, bang, call mama, daddy, or somebody, please turn it down, turn it off so that it doesn't interfere with the testimony that we're going to hear this morning. And, <clears throat> excuse me, if you do receive a phone call, please make sure that you take it outside so that you don't disturb us. I think the other housekeeping rules uh, we might be used to by now. And um, if there are any other questions, make sure that you email Cesar Melgarejo and he will answer your questions. And so with that, Let's get started. We have a hearing today on Senate Bill 455. Madam Majority Leader, and I understand we have some more people joining us virtually. So begin when you're ready. Thank you, Chair Spearman. Good morning to you and members of the Committee on Commerce and Labor. My name is Nicole Canizaro, and I represent Senate District 6, which is located in the northwest portion of the Las Vegas Valley. And I'm here to present for your consideration today, Senate Bill 455. This bill revises the qualifications to perform computed tomography and fluoroscopy. And I apologize in advance if I mispronounce any of these very technical scientific names. I think I'm getting an okay that I did all right. During the 2019 legislative session, Nevada legislators worked diligently with the radio, radio, radiological technologists and their legislative advocates to pass Senate Bill 130, which passed the Senate by a vote of 21 to 0 and the Assembly by a vote of 40 to 0 with one excuse. We believe that this measure addressed the issues that had been raised regarding the training and licensing of these medical professionals. Unfortunately, when it came to promulgating the regulations, we found that due to wording in the bill, these radiological technicians were restricted from receiving the license needed in order to practice fluoroscopy, which is part of their work. Senate Bill 455 will rectify that situation once adopted by this legislature. With your permission, Chair Spearman, I would like to turn the presentation over to Chad Hensley for his testimony as he is the actual expert on this measure and the profession of radiological technology and I'm sure can answer plenty of questions that the committee may have. I um, mean, he is joining us virtually. Yes, sir. Please begin. Great. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Spearman and members of the Senate Commerce and Labor Committee. I am Chad Hensley, representing the Nevada Society of Radiologic Technologists. On behalf of all radiologic technologists in Nevada, I appreciate you hearing this emergency legislation today, and I would like to extend a special thank you to Majority Leader Canizaro for her remarks and introduction in this measure. In 2019, SB 130 was passed creating licensing requirements for those who operate medical imaging equipment that use ionizing radiation, such as x-ray and computed tomography. This important legislation helped to protect patients by ensuring only properly educated personnel perform these medical imaging examinations. Unfortunately, earlier this month, we received two technical bulletins, which are exhibits on Nellis from the Division of Public and Behavioral Health indicating that individuals holding the radiography credential would not be eligible to engage in fluoroscopy based on a late amendment of the bill. The intent of the fluoroscopy amendment offered in 2019 was to allow radiation therapists along with those credentialed in radiography to engage in fluoroscopy. Rather, it inadvertently limited the provisions of fluoroscopy services to only radiation therapists. The impact of not allowing those credentialed in radiography to engage in fluoroscopy would have detrimental impacts to patient care in hospitals, imaging centers, surgical centers, pain clinics, and any other facility that currently rely on the assistance from radiologic technologists in fluoroscopic examinations. This emergency legislation would correct this unintentional error and allow those who are properly trained in fluoroscopy to continue working within their scope of practice and provide high quality patient care to those in Nevada. Lastly, this emergency legislation would better clarify under the parameters 
someone could perform computed tomography while still allowing for the evolution of the field. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Madam Joy Leader. And Chair, that does um, conclude our brief uh, presentation on this bill, but stand ready to answer any questions uh, that you or the committee may have. Thank you, uh, Senator Settlemeyer, and I think I see Senator Hardy. Senator Settlemeyer, go first. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate that. Uh, great concept to go ahead and correct some of the errors. We know that this unfortunately happens. Uh, I'm just always worried about sometimes when we delete things. So I was wondering if you or somebody, if you have to ask, you know, a discussion of why the deletion of the radiation therapy people. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Jeanette Feltz, uh, representing the Nevada Society of Radiologic Technologists. Uh, thank you so much for that question, Senator. I just got off the phone with um, the radiation control program um, and the folks who raised that question about the deletion. Um, and there will be subsequent written confirmation of this, um, but their interpretation of the bill is that the uh, Deline the uh, lined out or radiation therapy is actually included in section one sub two C has completed other appropriate training or holds another appropriate credential approved by the division. So that will include the radiation therapists. And I just got off the phone with them moments before the hearing. I appreciate that. And thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as usual, though, since we're correcting something because we didn't correct it correctly last time, maybe it's just a good idea to just stick the word in anyways, and then that way there is absolutely no vagueness, there is no confusion, there's no difference of interpretations because we're already having to fix this. Not that, unfortunately, that's what we do 90% of what we do, uh, but anyway, just a thought. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Hardy. Thank you, Madam Chair. And... I see in that section one, subsection two, the word or, and so those ors kind of follow in place. So if if you took out the deletion, if you reverse the deletion, you still have the or and you still have the or, and so all of those would would uh, train in in the or method. And therefore, all of them would. So, is there a disadvantage to taking out the deletion of the radiation therapy? And I'm looking at Chad, I guess, now, because Jeanette wisely got off the <laughs> table. Um, for the record, this is Chad Hinckley. Thank you, uh, Senator Hardy. Um, I. I would yield to radiation control in regards to how they would um, enforce this. Um, to answer your question directly, I don't see a negative impact by including therapists. Good morning. This is Margot Chapel for the record, uh, if I may, on behalf of the radiation control program. Um, we, that will not, we're, our interpretation is that there is no, um, there's no issue with that segment. So we would interpret it. The program has reviewed it and um, it will be interpreted as uh, Senator Hardy indicated. Thank you. So the ARRT quote R quote, unquote R would be the radiation therapist. Is that correct? Um, for the record, this is Chad Hensley. No, the ARRT parentheses R are those who are certified in radiography. A therapist credential will have the parentheses T next to ARRT. And so the ARRT uh, would be the thing crossed out that actually doesn't need to be crossed out because it would be uh, included in C of subsection two, section one, correct? Again, I th uh, for the record, this is Chad Hensley. Um, I would yield to um, read control for that specific answer, please. Uh, and this is Margot Chapel for the record. I, although I'm responsible for the radiation control program, I don't know the answer to that question. So I'm going to try to get it while you're still hearing and I'll be right back. 
I'm not sure I'll remember the question by the time you come back. Um, so this is NRS 653.630. Um, I mean, I remember back in the day where physicians would have a fluoroscopy unit in their office. Um, does this preclude a physician DOMD from doing uh, fluoroscopy? Fargo Chapel, for the record, it does not. Okay, so it it only it doesn't touch other NRSs or other boards. Appreciate Fargo Chapel, for the record, you are correct. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Additional questions? No. Okay. Madam Chair, leader, uh, any additional comments? No, Chair, uh, we appreciate the time and, and ability to answer your questions and the committee's questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we'll go now to uh, support in the room. Anyone in the room support? Thank you. And we'll do 15 minutes per uh, segment and three minutes per person. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. For the record, my name is Jim Wadhams. I'm here on behalf of the Nevada Hospital Association. Needless to say, Having this, these personnel, these people available are critical in the delivery of health care. And unfortunately, that late bulletin would have eliminated part of that workforce. And so we support the resolution of this. And uh, although I had originally signed in on the Internet in opposition, if, if the resolution of this is, as the committee questions, is that these people can practice, we'll be in support. <laughs> If it needs to be amended, we'll be in support of that. The point is we have to keep these people eligible to work. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Okay, so now we'll go to the phones. Broadcast, anyone on the phones, we're in support. Thank you, Chair, good morning. Callers, if you would like to testify in support, of Senate Bill 455. Please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 548. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You have three minutes, you may begin. Caller with the last three digits, 548. There you go. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You have three minutes. This is Jen Hall, Nevada Rural Hospital Partners. Today, in support of this um, clarifying. Excuse me, broadcast. Legislation. Broadcast. It's, it's not real clear on yes, this end. It's not real clear on this end. Can you get a little clearer or ask them to either speak into the phone or something? Certainly, your caller with the last digits of 548. Um, your volume is a little low. If you could please speak more clearly into your phone. This is Joan Hall representing Nevada Rural Hospital Partners. Is that better? Uh, yeah, it's real better. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're here today in support. We have had discussions regarding this clarifying language. Want to assure that it um, didn't affect rurals. Um, last session in 130, we had some um, abilities for rural providers to get um, grandfather clauses. We have talked with um, Ms. Chapel and Ms. Beckley yesterday and Chad Hensley, they believe that this does not affect us, but we want to make sure of that and believe that with this change that rurals will still be protected. So we urge your support. If there are any other callers who would like to provide testimony in support of Senate Bill 455, please press star nine now. Chair, you have no other callers in support at this time. Okay, we'll go to opposition. If you would like to testify in opposition of Senate Bill 455, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. 
Again, if you'd like to testify in opposition to Senate Bill 455, please press star nine now. Chair, you have no callers indicating opposition at this time. Okay, we'll go to those uh, neutral. Certainly, Chair. If you would like to testify in a neutral position to Senate Bill 455, please press star nine now. To testify in a neutral position, please press star nine now to take your place. Chair, you have no callers in a neutral position at this time. Thank you. Uh, committee members, any questions? Okay. Uh, Senator Hardy. So as, as I understand it, um, if we uh, don't uh, do anything to the grandfather clause, which this doesn't appear to do, and we know that uh, MDDOs can do it still, and the ORs are in place still where they're supposed to be, and we undelete the OR radiation therapy, then it will clarify everything including uh, subsection, subsection 2, subsection C, so that everybody who is anybody who has been trained will be applicable to uh, meet the criteria for uh, all of the uh, tomography and fluoroscopy in rural and urban places. I'm looking for confirmation from Margot Chapel, I think. Good morning, Margot Chapel. For the record, I believe you're accurate. Uh, I am still waiting for the Bureau Chief to respond to me, to be completely honest. So I apologize for not having that direct answer, but it's my understanding that they reviewed the language, the radiation control program, and they were very comfortable with it. Thank you. Uh, Senator Pickard, it, it wouldn't be commerce if you didn't ask one question, just one question. Madam Chair, I think uh, Senator Hardy uh, did a great job, so I'm going to not waste our time this morning. All right, thank you. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, uh, you want to come back up? Any closing statements? Uh, thank you, Chair Spearman and members of the committee. Nicole Canizaro, Senate District 6. Um, I appreciate you taking the time this morning to hear this. Obviously, we want to make sure that those who are doing this work can continue to do it. Um, we, of course, I know as Ms. Chapel mentioned, we're just waiting for some confirmation. Um, I'm comfortable if we left that language in, if that provides some clarity, um, unless there is some objection from the, from the board. But I think uh, there's not a, an issue keeping that deleted language in there for clarity. And thank you for your time. Thank you. And with that, we will close the hearing on Senate Bill 6, I'm sorry, 455. Oh, Senator Settlemeyer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a suggestion, but what if we did amend due pass, putting that language back in, and in the next hour or two or however long it takes, gets to the floor, if we find out that's problematic, we just do not attach that amendment. But if you're okay with that concept, I would make a request for amend due pass, uh, bringing back in those two little words. Okay, I'm okay if the sponsor's okay? Yes, Chair, we are. Thanks. All right, so um, that's what we'll do. I'll entertain a motion. I have a motion from Senator Scheibel. Oh. Senator, Senator, I'm sorry, motion from Senator Settlemeyer, second from Senator Scheibel. Any further discussion? All those, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, please call the roll for the vote. Senator Hardy? Yes. Senator Lang? Yes. Senator Neal? Yes. Senator Pickard? Yes. Senator Scheibel? Yes. Senator Settlemeyer? Yes. Chair Spearman? Yes. Yes, and so the vote uh, is unanimous, and I'll give the floor statement to the majority leader or whomever you designate. Okay, thank you. Uh, the last item on our agenda is... Um, Public comment. Do we have anyone on the phones for public comment? Thank you, Chair. Callers, if you would like to provide public comment, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Again, if you would like to provide public comment, please press star nine now. 
Chair, you have no callers for public comment at this time. Thank you. And so with that, uh, we will end our meeting uh, for today. And stay tuned because we can always come back. <laughs> so with that, we are adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>